Face Off, Part 1, 2, and 3. This was the Season 1 finale and the Season 2 premiere. I really hate these. I feel like a season should stand on its own, and waiting several months for the second half of a story kills the momentum of it. Anyway, what I like about this trilogy is that in many ways it represents a typical Animorphs mission. You have multiple characters carrying out multiple tasks, often with some blending into whatever front is happening above ground, while others infiltrate the facility while in Morph. Tom's Yurk, Innis 335. Wait, really? I thought Yurk's names were unique to the individual Yurk. In fact, it's like they just took Innis 226 and just added one, added one, and subtracted one. Anyway, 335 has become a high ranking Yurk, even surpassing Innis 226, who feels that he is superior to Tom probably because he is in the body of an older man. I actually really like this power dynamic. It allows for three almost interchangeable villains to have a little bit more character. Although my experience watching this trilogy was made a bit more enjoyable because I was convinced that Tom was actually free from 335 and was just playing the role of his former controller. I recommend re-watching this episode as if Tom was free from the previous episode, and you'll get a whole different perspective of the episode. We also finally figure out what the disc can do, and it is so stupid. It restores Tobias's human form, can apparently give Rachel the ability to morph a Yurk, and has an entire copy of Alfangor's conscious. This disc was clearly manufactured at Ion Storm, because it is full of Deus Ex. Where am I going with this joke? Also, Jake discovers that the Yurks are creating a new breed that does not need the Condrona to survive. They never flat out say it, but are they implying they found a way to merge Yurks with the oatmeal? It's actually an entertaining episode to watch, as there is a tense atmosphere with a lot of moving parts. Although, part 3 kills the momentum. We quickly wrap up the plot in about 8 minutes, and then spend the rest of the episode winding down at the Cyber Cafe. Our falling action is so long that it is interrupted by a commercial break. Overall, I at least found myself entertained during this trilogy, which is more than I can say for a lot of other episodes in this series. The Forgotten is based on one of the plot threads from the Andalite's GIF, the one in which Rachel gets amnesia and is trapped in a shack with an old lady, the old lady being a freed controller who is convinced that Rachel is a controller. What I like about this episode is how scaled down it is. We mostly follow this old lady, who is convinced that she is the last human who is free. It's a decent retelling of what was essentially a throwaway plotline in the book. The Capture Part 1 and Part 2 This is uh, an okay adaptation of the book. In this two-parter, the Animorphs investigate Mr. Burnson's health clinic, which is being used as a front to get more human hosts specifically the governor, who is also a potential presidential candidate. Part 2 opens with the Animorphs celebrating their victory, but oblivious to the fact that Jake's a controller. When the Animorphs figure out that Jake is a controller, they tie him down to a chair, hoping to starve the Yurk to death after three days. Part 1 is an enjoyable heist, which I think is the only time we see the Animorphs actually use their battle morphs. And part two is a decent depiction of what it's like to be a human controller. You're a strong one, Jake. You remind me of another difficult one. No. I'm sure you'll recognize him. Tom. It took us almost a week to break him. But he gave up in the end. They all do. It's not a perfect adaptation, but it does hit some of the key moments. Don't give up, Tom. No matter what it tells you, no matter what it makes you do. Don't give up. You're not alone. Who is this? Just keep fighting, Tom. We'll be fighting with you. 